Autódromo José Carlos Pace, or Interlagos to you and me. It's a circuit steeped in stories, show, and cena. If you want to talk history, well, how much time do you have? The first Grand Prix took place in 1973 following a certain Brazilian success in Formula One. Fidopaldi is his name, I believe. <laughs> My grandfather won the first two races on home soil with compatriot Carlos Pace winning in 1975. Ayrton Senna, arguably the greatest driver to ever race in our sport, won his home race twice in 1991 and 1993. The Autódromo José Carlos Pace has become a place for many to pay their respect and celebrate the Rain Master with multiple pieces of art and even a statue inside the main grandstand honoring Ayrton. He's a national hero and you feel that every time you enter the circuit. Like many of the older racetracks still featured on the Formula One calendar, Interlagos has banked corners with drivers starting their lap on a half oval. Drivers will then have to combat the Senna S's some of the most entertaining corners for wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing before heading back up to the hill and through the banked final turn. Stats simply don't do this race justice, but if you're lucky to ever walk, run, or race around the Autódromo José Carlos Pace, every step of this 4.3 kilometer, 15 corner circuit will become ingrained in your mind for good reason. I proudly race under a Brazilian flag and I'm the 32nd Brazilian driver to have ever competed in Formula One. Fittipaldi, Senna, Piquet, Massa, Barrichello, the list goes on. But one thing's for sure, we all have that fiery Brazilian spirit. If you're in Sao Paulo for the race, there's some places you definitely need to take off your bucket list. Starting off with the restaurants, if you want to go to Fogo de Chão, it's a Brazilian steakhouse, you gotta go and eat there, it's amazing. And as well, my friend's restaurant, Philadelphia Braza. He has some really cool uh, historical racing stuff there. It's my friend Nelson Piquet Jr. So you... Uh, Make sure you go and check it out. For the third year running, the Sao Paulo Grand Prix is a sprint event, so it's fast and furious. Each day there's something to fight for, and the risk versus reward management is something us drivers manage daily. We can't talk about Brazil without discussing sprint qualifying last year. Kevin, my man, what a day. Let me set the scene if you weren't watching. It's Friday, we're in Brazil, and it's raining. Nothing out of the ordinary that you might think, but it's qualifying for Saturday sprint race. Q1 was spent with drivers bravely moving away from the intermediates and putting on the softs. In Q2, conditions stabilized. Between Q2 and Q3, the sky began to darken and the weather turned. Kevin managed to get out quickly and put a lap time on the board, which was faster than even that of the world champion. Before Red Flag brought the session to a halt, as the session resumed, the rain continued to fall, stopping anyone from improving resulting in Kevin securing his maiden pole position in Formula One, fittingly on the weekend of his 100th Grand Prix start for the Haas Formula One team. Okay, Kev. What position are we? Um, you're P1, mate. You're kidding. I am not kidding. You're kidding. You're kidding me. I've never, ever felt like this in my life, yeah. guys. It's not over don't, yet. Don't celebrate yet. Don't celebrate yet. yet. Come on. It's not over yet. It's not over yet, Kev. <laughs> If you want a carnival atmosphere, the celebrations never stop in Sao Paulo, and it's a race win that every driver wants on their CV. Vamos Haas, tamo junto.